Hello everyone. Long time no see. I have been noticeably absent from YouTube. So I apologise first and foremost. Sorry for being so MIA. Um, the clips that you're seeing now were clips that I was taking back in April and May of this year for a, a vlog and I was doing loads of fun traveling and all that stuff. We went to Prague for it was our 10 year anniversary together so we visited Prague and that was stunning and beautiful and then we went to London later on in the month as well because I went to go get a tattoo so there was lots of traveling and fun and you can see later on there's more clips as well of just studio vlog stuff so this started out as a studio vlog months ago but unfortunately when I got back from London I got a very bad dose and I had was I was taken out for like three weeks with bronchitis so that had me pretty much useless for three weeks and by that stage the month had gone by and these clips all felt old and not as interesting and I also started to have a lot more other stuff on my plate so I ended up having to prep for my shop opening and I, then I worked on my shop opening I was doing all that Patreon stuff and I was also quite busy in my day job as well so because of that these clips fell to the wayside and then YouTube just fell to the wayside as well so I am making amends I'm getting back into it so in this video I said well, I would show you some of the clips from that vlog as a little bit of a b-roll and then we will go into a paint with me later on as well of one of my original paintings for this month's Patreon videos. So in preparation for this video I put the questions out to people on Instagram and just asked if he had any questions he would like me to answer in a voiceover and he delivered so thank you for all the questions um i'm just gonna go chronologically and then ignore any repeats um one of the first ones i got was ah, what inspired me to make my art or m what inspires me i guess to paint like what i paint uh it's i feel like this is a crappy answer but it's literally just it's nature and the things I like to look at in nature. That's a really bad answer. Um, I went over in my previous QA video, my artist inspirations. So you can go look at that one if you want to see what artists I'm inspired by. But in regards to what in life I'm inspired by, it will definitely be just where I live in the world. So if you couldn't tell by the accent or uh, didn't just know, uh, I live in the west of Ireland and I think that heavily inspires a lot of my landscapes like if you just drive through the countryside here you'll see little hills, fields, sheep, one-off houses dotted around the countryside um, and just general beautiful scenery overall and that inspires a lot of my colour choices as well especially as you go more west towards Connemara you'll see a lot of like rusty greens and browns and stuff and I feel like a lot of the time you can see those colours pulled through in my landscapes and then um, I find like seasonally as well in the summertime I'll use like a lot of brighter pops of greens like brighter greens and then as you go into winter there'll be more browny greens and reds but um, yeah basically it's just it's just where I live in the world that inspires me honest to god uh, it's I can't really say much more than that. It's this is what it looks like here a lot of the time. You'll just I live in the countryside as well. Like I live middle of nowhere. It's like a ten minute drive to the nearest town. So, uh, and by town I mean a village of like a hundred people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's just the nature around me. I'm just constantly inspired by nature, by the clouds, the skies, the mountains the hills the animals the colors and textures i see everywhere that's that's the main driving inspiration behind my art um when i was younger i used to paint a lot more or not paint i used to, used to never paint um i used to specifically do like characters and things like that and i used to never I used to never paint backgrounds or landscapes or anything like that and I, and I enjoyed it like I've made art all my life but I find that 
painting landscapes feels like what I should be doing it it feels the most natural to me it comes most naturally to me I really think I've found my niche as a landscape artist in that sense what is my favorite painting is another Mm. question um I really I I find it hard to pick my favorite paintings because I find if you're an artist I'm sure you know like your most your most recent one is probably one of your favorites at least that's how I find it that the more recent ones I feel like are the best demonstration of my skill but um I think one painting that I I always go back to and that I always really enjoy looking at it's actually hanging up in my kitchen and I'll post a clip of it here is a landscape that I think I I think I either did it in 2020 or 2021 and it was like right when I was kind of first figuring out the style that I currently have I think um but yeah it's just I think it's a nice use of colors I like all the colors I used I like all the paints that I used I like the contrast I like the the shade I don't know I just think it's a really fun painting and I it's, it's like I said it's in my kitchen so I see it a lot of the time every day and I never get sick of it so I really enjoy looking at that piece another similar question is what's my favorite sketchbook page I think I don't want to just say what my favorite painting is for that one because it's I don't want to just pick a painting out of my sketchbook and say I like this one but I feel a lot of the time my favorite sketchbook pages in general are my are when I do timed studies so like I'll section it off a double page spread with tape and then I will go and time myself like I'll give myself maybe like six or seven minutes to lay down paints and then the last three minutes to um go over details with pencils after and I always like how those sketchbook spreads come out because I feel they're a really fun way to force yourself to feel loose in your art um and I feel like that's it's a good kind of like skill refresher or something or it's a it's a good way to break out of a bit of a rot with painting as well it's it's always nice to just go and not think about it just pull up pull up references and paint them as quick as you can I don't usually do those ones from memory or from imagination I usually pull up references for them um next one is how did I find my art style um I I don't really know I feel like this is a hard question to answer um I think I might have mentioned it in my previous QA video I feel like everyone's art styles is an amalgamation of what they're inspired by either elements of other artists work that they're inspired by now not when I say elements of other artists work I mean elements of their work not straight up ripping off another artist's style completely but like say for example and a related question to that as well is how to find your own art style I don't think I'm the best person to ask this question to be fair because I never created art with the sole purpose of trying to find a style I don't think it's something that you can really do very intentionally um or at least for me it never came with intention i uh, i think it's just something that literally comes with practice and just creating art and figuring out what you actually like to do what you enjoy doing um and like observing things in like the world and what you're inspired by and just having fun with it and making lots of art it's really I don't think it's something that can be intentionally done um and as well as that I don't think I don't think you will find your style by intentionally mimicking somebody else's either uh I think one way to do it is to really just think about what you like like what you are inspired by in the world and what you see day to day that you really like that inspires you to paint and as well as that is if you're inspired by other artists what particular aspects of their art inspires you to figure out what 
like significant elements is in their art that makes you love their art so much um so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't go out trying to mimic someone else's style to try and find your own if you're going to be inspired by other people i would suggest to figure out what in particular about their art attracts you so much and then figuring out that with everything like if you see a nice landscape like just out on a walk what about that particular landscape inspires you and i think anyone's art style is just an amalgamation of everything that they're inspired by whether it be other artists whether it be you know music whether it be books whether it be um just life around them i think that's all anyone's art style is is just things that they love squished together into a painting um but yeah i don't think it's an intentional thing uh i think it's just something that comes with time and as well as that i think everyone's art styles are always evolving because people are always evolving as well um so yeah i don't think i have any particular advice other than that on it and yeah uh, how i found my art style i i don't know <laughs> because i never intentionally looked for it i think it's exactly what i was saying earlier it's just that it's an amalgamation of things that i'm inspired by people landscapes colors that i see every day that's that's just it really someone asked how do i keep my colors so clear and vibrant mine always muddy up um i think I used to struggle with this when I was younger, first of all. I absolutely did struggle with my colours muddying up, especially when I, I used to use watercolour a lot when I was younger and I found um, I used to really mess up things there. Uh, first and foremost, I didn't. I stopped using watercolour because it didn't work for me, it didn't work for the way I painted. It took too la long to dry between layers. If you are using something that's very wet and you're using colours that and your colors are muddying i would say dry your layers in between then if you're using something like this like gouache i would say to let your layers dry before you go putting any new paint on top um and as well as that uh, as you can see as i'm painting here i paint in sections so like i'll do a big dark blobby section but you can see the section below it might be empty and then I'll go back in with a colour I want to go in with there. I don't layer all of my colours on top of each other. I leave gaps between them. As well as that, uh, I tend to use the same colour families when my paint is wet. If I'm, you can see for this, for the painting that I do in this video later on, I will add some red to it. And red and green, green are complementary colours. So if I was to add red, what? Bleh. If I was to add red directly onto my green paint and try and like shape it and move it around and stuff, it will muddy up. It'll end up being brown. And that's probably not what you want to do. You probably want your red to stand out if you're using red. So your best bet is to wait for your layers to dry in between. That's what I would recommend. Uh, and another thing is that I tend to use my gouache quite dry like wet enough that it flows smoothly on the page but dry enough in that it doesn't wet the re-wet re-wet the colors underneath and reactivate them because gouache is water activated so the more water you add the more it's going to penetrate through the layers below so yeah wait for layers to dry don't over wet things and work wet within the same color groups so that you don't get those muddiness don't don't work wet with wet when they're complementary colors because you'll end up muddying them out then what have what are my favorite mediums to use in art uh i feel like the most obvious answer for this is gouache uh the <laughs> gouache just works the best for me i find i like doing mixed media clearly and um I like the way gouache dries quickly i like the way i can work multiple layers all in one session um, I like how it adds more texture than say watercolours does you can have thicker blobs of gouache that add like nice you can see the brush strokes underneath and everything I like that about it and I also prefer water based gouache to acrylic gouache because I can re-wet it I can just have the blobs dry on my palette and then I can go back and use them so that's what I like about 
gouache um, and then for mediums on top I'm a firm fan of uh, coloured pencils and I also quite like um, pastels whether that be oil, wax or soft pastels I like all of them I think they add a really nice texture to my pieces one medium that I really love working with and the only reason I don't work with it more frequently is just because it's a bit messy and more tedious is oils. I really love oil painting. I think I think oils are actually my favourite medium of paint. It's just because I'm a bit lazy and I want to get stuff done fast. I prefer, I'm a bit of an impatient person so I prefer things going by quickly and I don't like having to wait days between layers to try in oils, even if I'm using like a fast dry medium. But that being said I actually think oils might be my favourite paint medium to use (laughs) which is probably something of a surprise. Um, Someone asked what is your process for developing a colour palette for a piece? Uh, It's really mood based and intuitive for me. This is not the answer you were probably hoping for but um sometimes I'll just be like oh I'd really love to use like for this one I wanted to use a mix of cool greens and warm greens together and have that contrast with them so that's what inspired me for this piece um so yeah I'm I'm not the best sometimes I'll see the way our, an artist will use certain colors and be like oh I'd love to use colors in that way but honest to god it it really just depends on my mood sometimes I'll be like I'm really feeling a hot pink today or like I really want to use like a grungy gray or something it I don't have a very definitive process for coming up with palettes for paintings I'm sorry (laughs) it's like the one thing that's very just comes sort of naturally to me I don't for this piece I did do a sketch because I had the idea of using warm and, and cool greens but apart from that I don't really plan out the rest of it I just mix paints until they look how I want them to look um, Am I a self-taught artist or did I have schooling for it? No, I did not have schooling for it at all um, The only schooling I had for art was in like secondary and primary level education so you're you know high school if that's what you call it um depending on where you are but yeah secondary school that's as far as my art education went um and my art teachers were not my art teacher was not uh, amazing either um yeah I've, I have no I have no education art is literally just something I enjoy doing and I've done it for all of my life and now I'm continuing to do it. Um, I do have a degree. I have a degree in genetics and cell biology and I work in a job that has nothing to do with art either and nothing to do with genetics either. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I'm, I'm science and art were my best subjects in school so I chose science because I thought that's a more secure career path. <laughs> don't be like me if you want to do art do art (laughs) but yeah that's I had no interest in pursuing art to any sort of higher level education after school I always just wanted it to be a hobby and then I think as I got older I decided not to make it a hobby anymore (laughs) um someone asked if uh, I have tips for loosening up landscapes and they say they struggle most with good composition um, I don't know if I can give any good advice on composition. I, I've never really thought much about the composition of my pieces. Like I said, I'm inspired by the landscape around me and they're just usually rolling hills everywhere and like mountains, um, low mountains, not like high peaks. But yeah, uh, that's, that's usually where I'd, like I just see hills and fields and that's what I get inspired by and usually you're looking out on them from a hedge or something so there's trees and stuff um so I don't think I can give any super good advice on composition uh tips for loosening up landscapes is uh to one paint with no expectations or to draw whichever your medium is do it with no expectations just have fun like I think what makes at least for me what can make my art really tight is when I'm 
holding myself to too much expectations and thinking oh this has to be good I'm gonna post this online it's like no just do it for you and 99% of the time when you don't care that's when you allow yourself to be looser at least I find maybe that's not you but that's just for me personally um another one that I mentioned earlier on is the timed studies so literally give yourself 10 minutes to make a painting um and don't allow yourself any more than that they those time studies really help you really help you to force you to be loose because you have to get a cohesive co- cohesive coherent cohesive painting done in 10 minutes you gotta be loose you have to just get the general idea of shapes down you know um another thing that i see people i've heard this somewhere before from a few different places i can't remember where but um say you have a reference photo in front of you like squint your eyes or like if you're if you can make your eyes go blurry on command like just just make your eyes go blurry or squint your eyes so that the picture in front of you becomes blurry and then you can break it down you can see okay well that field that looked really complicated to me with my eyes normal was like really was there was loads of fields with loads of details but now when I make my eyes blurry it's just a green blob and then the field next to it is just a darker green blob and that tree there is an even darker green blob and then the sky is like a grey blob so like you can do things like that to try and like trick yourself into seeing things as kind of looser shapes um if you get bogged down in the details initially um other questions uh, my favorite piece that I've created in the last couple of months so this person specified last couple of months so I can't go back and I can't say it's the one in my kitchen from years ago uh, I feel like my favorite piece in the last couple of months is this one I'll pop it up on screen uh, it was kind of I, I was inspired by one of my older pieces which I will also pop up on screen I wanted to kind of recreate that in my more up-to-date recent style and I really I really liked how this one came out I really liked the colors it just felt so fun it was it was really enjoyable I liked that one um what do you watch slash listen to while drawing uh 99 percent of the time i am listening to audiobooks uh i love reading <laughs> i'm an avid reader but i found in recent years because i do art for a job and i have a full-time job and i want to do all my other things i don't have much time for physically sitting down and reading a book so i've gravitated to audiobooks in recent years and i love having audiobooks it's been such a game changer i can like consume so much more literature while not while like multitasking (laughs) so yeah i'm almost always listening to an audiobook if i'm between audiobooks or something maybe i'll watch like youtube um or just have youtube going in the background but yeah audiobooks all the way the occasional podcast um favorite podcast is no such thing as a fish it's um if you're in the uk or ireland or you watch english panel shows uh they're the people who do the research behind qi and they're they every week they come up with their four favorite facts and they're very funny that's always really interesting and a giggle but in regards to books i have literally just finished reading hyperion um that was that was a really interesting book i thought that was i was way more fun than I was going into it expecting I thought it was going to be much more sort of serious but it was really good and some of the stories were like really creepy and then other ones were just sad but interesting um so yeah that's like um a sci-fi book I think I say I think because some of it was like sci-fi fantasy-esque um but yeah so I suppose my top three genres that I normally read would be uh sci-fi fantasy and romance uh what are my top three colored pencils oh that's a really hard question uh i think definitely my stubbiest ones would be oh let me grab them really quick 
Okay, I have a hold of them here. Um, this one is definitely an influence by Emma Carlyle. It's uh, the Luminance colour pencil in Payne's Grey. Um, I think her whole Patreon is called the Payne's Grey Club. So I tried out that pencil because of her and I was sold immediately. It's a lovely, dark, cool blue. I'll actually take some quick footage maybe of... Or images even of swatches of each of these so you can just see them but um that's really nice i find for if you're doing little details of like houses or roofs or fences and tree branches i really like Payne's gray for those ones and then a similar well not a similar color but a color i use for those things as well but even darker and this is like my stumpiest pencil this is a really dark dark blue and I really like it. I love dark, dark blues to like add more depth that I can't achieve with paints mm. uh, because I don't tend to use like blacks for my paints um, is dark indigo and that's by Luminance as well. And then tied in third place, like this is, these wouldn't be like my most used pencils. Like the first two are definitely my most used. I've gone through multiples of them. Um, but these ones I would say are like my favorites of the moment. Uh, you've probably seen it in a lot of my pieces recently. I've been using my, I've been using um, like a lot of kind of like pops of like cobalt blue or like very royal blues, very nice pops of blue. Um, so I have two pencils here that I kind of gravitate towards and they're both very similar. One is the Prismacolor Premier Pencil in Cobalt Blue Hue. And then the other one is the whole bean artist's colored pencil in ultra blue so those two are in a similar vein and they're tied for third place but that was a really good question and it was really hard i can never rank things i love everything too much um another question i got that i also really like is what is my favorite thing to do when i'm not making art um that's probably crafts. I am a craft girly and I love making things and doing things with my hands. So uh, I'm just gonna list them off here. You would have seen a clip of me earlier on actually um, using a long arm quilter to quilt a quilt top. God, how many times do I say quilt? So yes, I love quilting. I love sewing my own clothes. I I uh, recently did a really nice embroidery piece um, I love knitting and crochet and I've gotten recently when I was mentioned how I was sick back in like April and May I got back into cross stitch which is something I hadn't done since I was like I'd say a teenager but I wanted something the knitting pattern and the knitting pattern that I'm doing right now is really complicated so it's a lot of complicated stitches and I can't it's too complex to memorize the pattern off so I had to pay a lot of attention for it and it was too difficult to do when I was sick and I was like loopy on a load of painkillers and um, so I decided to switch back over to cross stitching and like there's so much more resor resources for cross stitching and there's so much more of an online presence for it than there was when I did it when I was a teenager. And so I've gotten really back into it now and I'm like have multiple pieces and I've already finished some pieces and then I have pieces that are going to take me years to do. So that's that's my craft flavor of the month. But yeah, I'll um, maybe I'll like insert some pictures or some clips of like all the crafts that I've been working on recently but yeah crafts of all varieties it's actually like a slight dream of mine right now to try and just switch to part-time work and to work in a craft shop part-time I love it so much <laughs> like I've worked in retail before so I know what I'm signing up for with retail work but oh yeah do art part-time work in a craft shop part-time sounds sounds so good <laughs> But yeah, thank you for that question. I love gushing about crafts. Uh, if you want a video of me showing off all my crafts, please, please ask me for that. <laughs> I'll gladly do it. Um, someone asked, when did you know that art would become part of your life and what got you started? I, it's always been a part of my life, to be honest. Um, like I was saying before, I never intended for it to be any form of a career or for me to make any sort of income at all off of it. But um, when I was younger, yeah, all I used to do was draw. Me and my best friend growing up, we were both really loved drawing and it was so much fun.
I've always I've always made art I've always drawn I've always loved looking at art and creating and yeah it's always it's always been there it's always been a part of me um and I nobody else in my family's an artist per se my mother would be really into crafts and my father is really appreciates art you know he's like really interested in it and buys paintings and stuff but nobody else like makes art art but they're artists in their own way if that makes sense (laughs) um yeah so I never really got started in a sense but I suppose when I started taking art more seriously and when I wanted to start exploring my style more would have been after college I college or university or whatever um I did not enjoy my time in university at all. I was a very bad, bad, bad time in my life. And I stopped making art quite a bit. I still would make art occasionally, but it was very, had no direction and it wasn't that great. And yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my art. And then after college, um, I started recovering from the horrors of it (laughs) and I got more into art and I wanted to start exploring more mediums and following more artists and learning more just from trial and error just from trial and error so yeah after college is when I started getting into it more and started enjoying it more as a hobby and then I'm sorry if you can hear my dog squeaking her squeaky toy I have her banned from this room but she's like right beside the door squeaking it (laughs) um it's such a loud toy oh I hate it but she loves it so I have to persevere um then when then during the pandemic so in January of 2020 I started a new job um like I quit my old job and started a new one and uh, uh it was bad <laughs> it was a bad time I did not like that job I did not like the working environment and then the pandemic happened as well so that was like an extra layer of sad on top of sad and I was really looking for a form of escapism or like some form of hope that I wouldn't be stuck there forever and ever um so that's when I started my Instagram page uh, I had just been posting my art on like my personal Instagram page but then I started up my what you now know was Hannah Flanagan art it used to be Pedini Bjog uh, but nobody could pronounce that so I changed it to Hannah Flanagan because that's a lot more readable to non-Irish speakers um, so yeah it was 2020 when I started thinking about actually selling my artwork or taking Instagram and social media seriously by posting and stuff like that so that's when I started doing that more seriously um I like this question as well does art still feel like a hobby or more of a task to you um I feel like it's absolutely okay this is it's hard it's hard to answer you're asking me the real hard hitting questions lads um I would say that it's not a hobby anymore I would consider hobbies things that I don't think about too much or that I don't put much pressure on myself for and I do put pressure on myself for art because I'm now getting paid for this and people are expecting things from me from it so that's a very fair assumption um uh so no I don't view it as a hobby task I don't know in my brain task sounds like a chore or something you know it sounds like oh I'm just doing it because which is definitely how I feel sometimes sometimes I'm not in the mood to make any art at all but you know how social media is and how it won't let you not post things (laughs) so I view it now as a job but I view it as my dream job I view it as doing something that I absolutely adore doing and even though there's aspects of it like there is aspects of any job there's things I don't like do having to do I absolutely don't like having to do all the social media stuff I'm do- I don't I don't think I'm a very charismatic person and I don't think I'm very good at speaking by any means so I find all of that stuff quite hard but I still love the rest of this job if that makes sense um 
yeah so not a hobby but more of a dream job that I get to do and that hopefully someday I'll get to do as a full-time job um so whenever I feel down about it I or like whenever I feel like I don't want to do this I kind of try and rein myself back in and think about how far I have come with my art so far and the journey I have taken on it and like how if past Hannah was to look at Hannah of today she'd be like oh my god you did what people are paying you for your art <laughs> I'd, I'd lose my mind um, and I'd be really mad at myself for the days that I don't enjoy it but no um I I yeah not a hobby but I do love it but it is also job dream job yeah <laughs> um how do you make art consistently uh kind of like how I was just saying I treat this as a job I I love journaling um if you don't know I love journaling I love making lists and planning things oh so good um so I like will make tasks I I try to hold myself to posting six times a week on social media um now sometimes I don't do that and I try not to beat myself up over it too badly but so that means that uh, if I do three paintings a week that has me covered because I'll film every one of those and then I will uh have the post of the painting and then I'll have the reels of the painting as well so uh, I set myself that goal to at least two to three paintings a, a week um, and then I just try to find time in the evenings it's easier for me to do it in the evenings now because it's summertime and the sun doesn't set till quite late so I have pretty much all evening after work to paint if I want to because I have the natural light and, and then in the winter time I try to like focus the bulk of my paintings on the weekend um yeah and honest to god the whole making it consistently thing is literally just forcing yourself to (laughs) it's a crap answer because you're never going to want to do something if you're not in the mood for it but it is the only way that I do it is by telling myself no you have to I'm also someone who feels I'm a very restrictive person and I always set rules for myself so um, that works for me if you're not one of, naturally one of those people um, it might be harder for you but that is how I do it I do it by forcing myself to do it <laughs> which is a crap answer but uh, yeah it got to get done basically just treat it like a job you know you have your tasks that you have to complete um, and then making the time for it as well it's hard to it's hard to time manage <laughs> a lot of the time but I try I try um any tips for us trying to start a shop or a patreon uh, oh, I don't know um I feel like my number one tip is that you're literally never ever gonna feel like you're ready to do it and you you can't just you can't wait until you feel ready because you're literally never going to feel ready um I personally don't think you need to have any x amount of followers to open a shop or patreon like if people want to join your shop or, or if people want to join your patreon or if people want to buy from your shop they're going to do it you know there's no requirement to have x amount of followers um then uh I would also make sure you're prepared for the logistics of it all uh just like make sure that you have enough time to make the content that you're promising people for your patreon um make the like make sure you have time and you make sure you have all the resources that you need to post everything if you're posting shop orders or posting physical rewards make sure that you like have all your packaging materials make sure you're aware of the cost of shipping and you can factor that in to your patreon rewards um yeah uh i'm i'm a big planner so i had everything written down and planned out prior to starting everything that's just my personality i think i'm just that's just how I do it um and even though I had everything ready to go for a long time before I ever started I still didn't feel like I was ready (laughs) and now I have a patreon and a shop and I still feel like I'm not ready (laughs) um 
don't feel like you have to wait for a certain moment or a certain milestone to do any of those things do them whenever you want um if you want to do it i would say just do it don't feel like you have to wait basically there's no requirements there's no minimum requirements for any of these things if you want to do it and you have the time and the resources go do it um yeah someone else asked where does my motivation to create art regularly come from uh sorry if you can hear the dog crying to get in (laughs) this makes me sound so bad um so yeah where do i find the motivation to create regularly that's basically what i was saying and my other answer was that i just force myself to make it um i see this as a job and in any job you're gonna have tasks you have to do every week and you're gonna do them that's that's just it i'm just good at self-discipline as well (laughs) uh to to my detriment as well um but yeah that's that's how i do it i'm just i just do it because it's a job to me now um do you ever struggle with motivation slash inspiration and if so how do you overcome it yeah (laughs) definitely i found when we moved house um it took me a very very long time to feel comfortable enough in the space to create comfortably again and i felt like that was a really weird way to feel and I was like why would I ever feel like this this is actually just a house it shouldn't matter where I am and then I was actually talking to my mammy recently and she moved house like a couple of years ago as well and she said she really struggled with finding the motivation to like knit and do her like creative hobbies ever since she moved house as well so I don't know maybe it's just a family thing for us or maybe it's a it's like a weird space changing (laughs) phenomenon but uh yeah I can definitely feel like not motivated or not inspired um that particular issue just went away with time and in the meantime I was forcing myself to paint um (laughs) this makes it sound like I don't love painting I do love painting I do love doing this but in times where the energy is low um, it is hard and I just make myself do it. Uh, there is little tasks that I do that can help me create but not have to think as heavily about what I'm creating. So again I'm going to tout those 10 minute studies. They're my go-to. I'm really in the mood to do one of them now. <laughs> um, but yeah they're, that's like my top, top like favourite technique for gaining inspiration again or to get your mojo back if you're feeling a bit sluggish um another one is um letting paint aside for you i'm not going to go into detail here because i have a whole video of that over on my patreon if you sign up to the woodland wardens tier i do monthly videos there so where i'm consistent on or where i'm inconsistent on youtube i'm consistent on patreon uh but yeah, that's just basically where you can, if you lay down paint, you can see what it shows you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to leave that a mystery. And it's only the lucky few on Patreon who get to see that one. Um, but yeah, there's just there's just little kind of tips and techniques and tricks that you can do to like make art but with less effort and less thought. You don't have to make every piece like a stunning amazing hundreds of thousands of likes piece not that I ever got hundreds of thousands of likes on anything but you know what I mean it doesn't have to be stunning you just have to make it and get stuff down on a paper sometimes um someone asked can I do a desk tour uh that's similar to the studio tour so I will do a tour sometime um how do you manage time for creating arts and continuous learning arts after work? Uh, I don't really do any continuous learning with art. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm, there's one course I'm doing. I'm doing a the Good Ship Illustration picture book course, but I haven't touched that in months. <laughs> it's hard to find the time, basically. Uh, this is another job to me, so I am working two jobs on top of 
trying to do a lot of other stuff in my life as well so I, I don't have time for continuous learning <laughs> basically sorry to disappoint you with that um but yeah uh I do make time for the hobbies and the things that I want to do though I absolutely make sure to always uh, find the time to do things that I actually love doing so that I don't get burnt out and I don't get overworked um someone asked any platforms or courses that you would recommend uh, the only one I can recommend is the Good Ship Illustration picture book course I haven't finished that yet I think I'm only about like ha- maybe halfway through if even uh, I found it's been interesting so far Um, I can recommend I mean courses are dear though that's the only thing I'd say like you know choose <laughs> choose if you want to do it and you can afford it go for it but like you're not like missing out on a load if you can't afford to do a course and um, yeah that's basically the only course I've ever done uh, so I don't know any other ones that I can recommend sorry um, any plan to do full time illustration slash arts education uh, no because all of the uh illustration I don't even think there are any illustration masters at last I checked near me uh, or in Ireland um and of the ones that there are there are they're in Dublin and I live on the opposite side of the country and they're not online and uh yeah I'm not gonna move to Dublin I lived in Dublin for my undergraduate degree and I hated it <laughs> so uh yeah no no plans to go to Dublin um I had briefly considered the Falmouth uh illustration course and that is that's online um I believe but uh that costs money and I didn't have that money I don't have that money <laughs> um and also uh, if I was to do a course I would not have time to do any art stuff on this or I would also not have time to work my full-time job I work 40 hours a week in my full-time job so I don't think I could do that because I need money to live I have a mortgage to pay so um yeah no if I was maybe if I was if I could go back in time and I could not do genetics I would probably do uh, some sort of illustration degree but yes no plans for further education at all because time and money are things I lack um that is it for all the questions I think sorry this well I'm not gonna say sorry but this did go on for super long I've been chatting to you for like almost an hour now so if you don't like my voice I'm so sorry and also why did you sit for this long if you didn't like my voice um (laughs) uh yeah so thanks for sticking around thanks for listening i hope it wasn't too boring i hope you gained some insight and i hope you liked watching that little painting that was one of the originals for the originals here on my patreon um if you're interested in originals also i have recently put some for sale on my shop which is now open you that that's also a new thing that happened since I last posted on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. But uh yeah, you can shop originals, prints, stickers on my shop. And I'm also somewhat open for commissions, but that is a case by case basis. So reach out if you want a commission. Um that's all for now. I will be back at some point in the future. Maybe I'll do a desk tour if that was asked for a couple of times. Uh, and maybe next month I will try to do something of a studio vlog for ye as well. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day or night wherever you are in the world. And thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.